Alrighty. We have the 1000 watt rear hub motor that I'm going to put on my Jetson. And the only problem that I see is this the wire with the phase and hall connector on it um, is on the opposite side. So the motor cable on on the Jetson is actually over here in the same area as the brake and then there's a chain over here that drives the PAS and uh, your ability to pedal. The only thing that I see here that is not right is there is no gear here to attach the chain to you and I don't know if there's something I can screw on here uh, that will make it work if that unscrews I don't know if that unscrews so I'm probably gonna have to take this apart and mess with it and I may mess with it before I even install the tire because I don't feel like wasting my time <laughs> go back through and solder this but when you're testing and making sure everything works uh, you don't want to go in and solder everything until you know so now we got to take this motor cable which is this right here luckily it has a harness on it for the hall sensor and we can probably cut this off wire it to this hall sensor so we can still use the same connector now let's see if the colors are the same so we got black blue green yellow red okay and then this one should have five so what I'll do is I'll cut this wire so I can reuse this harness solder well electrical tape at first these wires to the other wires which I'll also cut this off and then these phase wires the yellow blue and green are uh, they connect to these yellow blue and green cables and that's pretty much your motor now this white cable I think is a speed sensor and you don't even really need it so I may end up eliminating that altogether but that's what we got careful not to nick your wires when you're doing this and there you go and then take your harness 
and then cut this off at a reasonable distance. Now we have a connector that we can use for the other plug. So we'll basically take this one off the new wheel, cut this off, and then we'll solder the, or eventually we'll solder these wires together. And it, they should match up color to color. Sometimes that's not always the case. That's why I have all this stuff electrical taped. But we'll uh, take these wires, connect them to these wires, cut this plug off. That way we have a harness, and then this should just plug right into the factory harness on the controller. That's the uh, hope anyways. It doesn't always work like that. Sometimes these wires don't match up. But in this case, it looks like they probably will. And then these just connect to the ones I just disconnected up here. Alright, before I uh, start working on this wheel, I'm going to pull this cable out. I might have to clip that zip tie, I don't know. Uh, that zip tie. Why doesn't that go out there? There we go. Simple as that. Now the motor's free. And we can take it and work on it. All right, I'm now taking the the brake rotor off, and I'm gonna install it onto here. So you can just thread these by hand so you don't strip them out. And then when you get done getting them all in there, you can tighten them down. Now these have locked tight on them so they should be okay as long as I get them semi tight, tight enough at least. Get all this good. Hopefully we don't need the uh, spacer. Let's go line all this up. Oh shit. I have to order a new tube. Should I get these? Because they're extra thick. I need the angled valve stem for this to work. I got the straight one. Didn't even think about it. That's what you get for ordering things before you even get the part. So I had to get a different tube as you saw. I went to go install the one that I got with the tire. And the valve stem was not curved. So I couldn't fill the tire up with air. Or the inner tube with air. So I had to get a... 45 angled valve stem. I could not get the air pump up in there to air it up so we had to order one of these separately that delayed things and I was just kind of frustrated at that point and I did not record any of the footage of me installing the hub. So I'm going to go through that real quick just to show you kind of how I got it set up. So here it is. I don't have my sprocket yet. It was delayed by Amazon. Hopefully I'll get that soon, but uh, we have a the stock washer on this side, and then I had to use the thicker washer. You can't really see that. Now I have this little safety thing that was on stock. Uh, I actually need to tighten it up more, but it's kind of like a uh, torque arm in a way, but it just attaches to the the uh, hub. And then I got a thicker washer here and another washer or the bolt from there and that's that now on the other side you have your kickstand so i have my thick washer on the inner side of the the fork here or whatever this is called and then i got my dropout washer then another washer on top of that and then this bolt clamping everything down uh, of course I got the kickstand too on there but yeah everything lines up I got the brakes all situated they're working great uh, this is a the way I got it set up it fits perfect so uh, the brake is aligned with the rotor and everything is is functioning the way that it should here's a washer right here you can see it it's a little bit thicker than 
a little bit thicker than the one on this side and that one you can barely even see so that's how I got the back wheel hooked up and it turned out really good I was pretty happy with it I got the motor cable right here uh, I was talking about that this I have it pointing down and then it goes straight up up this fork here and then it goes up inside the the frame and I fished it up through the the frame and it comes out into the where the controller is and hooks up there I'm gonna run the cable motor cable up in through the frame and I got my wire my pole wire here just just some metal wire really for tying up stuff and I'm gonna stick that down through the tube and then I'm gonna tie the motor cable onto this and pull it through whatever it takes try that I hate pulling wire on any project whether it's your house or your bike <laughs> Like we're good now there's a reason why i'm not explaining the entire wiring process here i'm working on a detailed wiring video that will explain everything a little bit more in depth it's kind of hard to do that in this video because it you know there's so many other things going on so i'll make a dedicated wiring video that you guys can watch that will explain what each wire goes to and how i solder wires and all that good stuff so stay tuned for that if that's something that you're interested in, please go down and hit that subscribe button. As soon as you hit that subscribe button, you have the option to hit the bell. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time I upload. And if you could, go down and like this video if this is helping you out. Now the wiring was pretty straightforward, but I did have to reverse the wiring for the wheel because I think the wheel's actually on backwards. And so I had to make it go in reverse, but it really goes forward for the way it's set up so it's not that big of a deal uh, there was no direction pointers on anything the tire or the wheel so I really don't know if it's going the right direction I don't know if it really matters too much tire looks good um, everything's smooth I have no noise no nothing in the back uh, I checked the motor after each ride I've rode it probably about three or four times now and no no issues whatsoever with it becoming loose or the motor getting hot or the battery getting hot or the controller getting hot or anything like that so i've checked it all uh, everything's working good now i got my motorcycle helmet on it's probably overkill for this but this is our first ride on the jetson It. Are you laughing at me? I would be.
try to get top speed here if I can. Thirty. That's pretty good. Pretty quick. Alright, this is a pretty steep hill. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> Pushing over a thousand watts right now. But it's smooth and easy to ride and doing about 10 miles an hour up this hill so we're gonna go over to my filming spot so I talked to you guys about the uh, what all I've done and what all I plan to do because this is totally not the final product need to check everything it might be a little bit of overkill for this little bitty bike and it probably look really funny driving it down the road like this but I'd rather be safe considering I just got everything hooked up and I do trust my work of course but I want to make sure that if I did fall my head was protected and so here it is the Jetson Bolt Pro upgraded and this setup is temporary. It's not 100% finished yet. I am still waiting on a few parts to get it close to being done. So I got a new controller in there. It's a KD controller. It's only 22 amp. So me hitting 30 miles per hour right now, um, I'm going to be able to hit more than that once I get my new controller. As you can see, I got a battery in the back here. I installed the basket last night. I had to bend the bolt here to get it to fit slightly just because this basket is not made for the bolt. So I'm going to eventually have somebody weld brackets onto this and make it to where this lifts up and is even. But it looks pretty good on here no matter what. And this battery is actually going to be moved up front. I already have a bag that I'm getting ready to order. And this is moving to the front because it's not in a very good spot back here. It's just temporary for now. Everything is wired and nicely managed. Um, it's all going to get ripped out again anyways when I get my new controller. But I figured I'd do it right for the video, make it look semi-nice. Now I am waiting for a sprocket so I can hook up the pedal assist and the pedals back up to the, uh, to the whole system. Uh, the sprocket that I had on my factory wheel wouldn't fit on here. So I had to order a new one. Amazon was supposed to deliver it yesterday and it's delayed. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully they didn't lose it. Um, but I will eventually get the pedal assist and pedals and everything hooked back up. I got my GPS speedometer here so you guys can see the actual speed. This is just an extension bar for holding my controller screen. my All my information right here. Um, then I got a thumb throttle hooked up with the voltage meter, which is nice. And then a bar end mirror and new grips. And this is a new set of handlebars, which I did a video about how to install this. It's really simple. Uh, but these are, I think, 600 millimeters. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. And a little small LED headlight. And that's pretty much it. I got another little small tail light on the back. And I got another light down there for a nighttime riding. So right now I got the pedals just wired uh, into the frame where they don't move so they don't hit me in the shin when I'm riding. 
Now that's a 22 amp controller that's hooked up to my 20 amp hour battery. Uh, it's a 48 volt system, but I'm getting ready to change a little bit. So I'm getting ready to hook up a 30 amp controller and possibly changing batteries to a 52 volt. So we'll see what happens. I have to find one. They're pretty expensive. And this is for my other bike anyways, but for the time being, this works fine. Now I was testing with a 10 amp hour battery that had really weak cells in it. Uh, so it like literally would cut out mid drive. And the battery didn't have enough oomph to get me up the hills. So this works out a lot better. Uh, right now it's just zip tied in and wired into the controller and the inside the little box here uh, and finally I have a zoom suspension seat post that's been installed for a while and then a cloud nine seat this seats kind of comfy not as comfy as my other cloud nine um, but it does a job but it's it's getting there I really like the way it turned out and it's gonna get even better once I upgrade the controller and the battery so Eventually we'll be able to take a lot of rides and go around town and all that, but I'm gonna throw on my motorcycle helmet over here and take this for another spin The goggles might be a little bit too much not like all this isn't a little bit too much already but This is what we got And this is still recording really good Another thing I forgot to mention, if you watch some of my older Jets and Bolts with the factory motor, the 350 watt, it's incredibly loud with the new controller. Where this one, you can't even hear it hardly. It's really nice. How do you like my new helmet and my new goggles? I think it looks pretty sweet. It's really meant for the scooter, but I figured I'd wear it now. I don't really care what people think of me. <laughs> I can't wait to get my new controller though because it's definitely going to be way more powerful than this. Let's go ahead and make a right and do another uh, drive down the straight stretch. Try to get top speed again. I'm at 49.1 volts going up this hill. I'd like to try to get it up to 30, 30 plus just to see. Speedometer is off a tiny bit, a couple miles an hour, as you can see. I can adjust that though.
but it sure is fun to ride this thing. It's actually a lot more comfortable since I got the wider bars now. And uh, got all my instrument cluster right here. <laughs> I don't know, necessarily need two speedometers, but I wanted to get an accurate reading uh, with the GPS. So it does a fairly good job hooked up like this for now. But the convenient thing about this is that I can throw it in my car just like the scooter. So if I uh, want to take it somewhere that is not my neighborhood, then I can. I don't want to take it much faster than 30 because of, uh, yeah. If I'm going to go over 30, <laughs> I will probably have to put on knee pads, elbow pads, wrist protection, the whole 90 yards, not just a full face helmet. But having these wider bars on here makes it a lot more stable. You can definitely feel a difference compared to the stock ones, which is really nice. CDC sounded like it anyways. Now I wonder if adding a higher amperage controller is going to drain the battery more or be better. We'll have to see what happens. I'm not doing a range test on this. Not right now. Not until I get everything done. But I will be doing a range test on this once I get it all hooked up and finished. Now there's a lot to this whole conversion install. Lots of parts, probably three or four times more expensive than the bike itself to do this. Which, if you want to have a little fun like me, you're welcome to attempt it. Now, wiring everything is pretty simple if you know electronics. But just know it is kind of a headache and kind of kind of a pain in the neck to be honest with you but it's fairly straightforward if you know what wires go to what uh, on the Jetson itself you kind of got to figure it out uh, just by trying to trace the wires back to where they go that's the hardest part but usually when you buy a controller they'll tell you what wires go to what so like the lights the pedal assist the e-brake sensor and or the brake sensor um, you know all the different things that you have on your bike to control various things cruise control things like that uh, there are there are particular wires for each thing so most controllers will tell you which one which wire is what but the Jetson 
controller does not there's I could not find anything on it that tells you what wire goes to which which uh, device on your bike so it's kind of a guessing game for a lot of it now swapping the throttle is pretty easy I think it's just two or three wires so instead of having the twist throttle, you got a thumb throttle. This has a voltage meter, which you guys really can't see right now because of the the uh, lighting, but it's there. It lights up red during night. It's a lot easier to see when it's dark out. I may go for a night ride later after I charge this back up and uh, I'll show you what the display looks like. All right, it's like 10 o'clock at night and I just wanted to do some real quick footage of what you see at night because it looks a lot better at night, I believe. We're just going to ride around the neighborhood. Huge difference from the last time I rode my bike around this area. As you can tell, it is super fun to drive around. Tomorrow's the first day of school for my kid and probably most of the people around here. So I'm just trying to be kind of quiet. But it's, every time I make a video like this, I love it because it, there's so much to, to do and talk about, but it also is very lengthy. I just wanted to go around the block real quick just to show you the night footage. And while everybody stares at me.
full moon, so it's kind of putting off a little bit of light. 